Welcome. On this All Saints Day, we gather to join the multitude of saints across the generations, people from all tribes, peoples, and languages to proclaim. We come to remember, we come today to grieve and to celebrate those saints who've come before, yet whose lives and witnesses continue to teach us. We gather today as the family of Christ. We are siblings and saints. We are diverse yet united by grace to live lives that declare, may we be guided today by the Lamb who is our shepherd, the one who gathers us, comforts us, and tends us. Amen. Now is the time to gather our hearts and our minds and our souls for worship. In the quiet of these moments, we remember why we are here. We seek the quiet center that brings us to God's mercy seat, and we are one in mind for worship. Our opening song this morning is, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Please join me this morning in the call to worship. <clears throat> Come all who are weary from the past week, 
Come all who need inspiration for the week ahead. Come all who are humble, open, and ready to learn. Then let us worship God. You may be seated. Our time of worship of praise in praise uh, will be singing, We Will Dance. What a day that will be, and I will rise.
There's coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All this peace forevermore on that hand. Yes, 
Come with me to the throne of grace where we might receive help in our time of trouble. Eternal God, we gather in your house this morning as Christians, Christians who love each other and love your world. Our hearts are burdened this morning by the violence and that we witness in nations far away and in our neighborhoods that are close to home. We grieve, O oh God, when your people suffer and your peaceable kingdom seems like an impossible dream. It's just too much sometimes, O oh God. We'd much rather keep our heads down and push on and pretend that all is okay. And yet you call upon us. You call us not to close ourselves off from the pain and the suffering of the world. You call us to stay human, to care for the suffering, to seek understanding, and not dehumanize enemies as objects easy to dismiss. Almighty God, you know our world history of complicated conflicts, of tense polarization, and of situations so politicized that we're afraid to pray for anything. Yet we know you grieve with us the violence of war and you condemn the abhorrent acts of terrorism. As war rages in the Holy Land, we know you grieve the historical suffering of Jews and Palestine, Palestinians. So may our praise for peace be uttered out loud for all to hear. May our prayers for diplomacy and, and for difficult yet faithful conversations to resume. Oh, Father, we also grieve over the ongoing war between Ukraine and Russia. We ask that you pave a path of peace towards this tragic conflict and all wars that are happening around the globe. Protect the innocent wherever bombs of destruction fall and God of grace, even as these wars rage, they're suffering close to home as well. Bless, the, bless those whose names we have called out this morning, whether it's out loud or in our hearts. We pray for those this morning who worry about loved ones and who care for their sick. We pray for those among us who are exhausted. We pray for the depressed. We pray for the grief sticking and we count among our friends and family all of these. We pray for the poor and the marginalized and we pray for the angry and those who are overlooked. Holy One, in a world that's so broken and in need of love, you do not leave us without hope. Your word, your scriptures help us to glimpse your vision for our future. It's a vision of our planet that's redeemed and renewed. It's a vision of peace and comfort where death and dying and crying and pain will be no more. You're at work in our world, making all things new, and we thank you for it. God of our Savior, we place our trust in this hopeful promise, even as we live trying our faithful hearts to be God's best, to be God's body, to be God's hands, to be God's feet, sharing your love with others. And so now as Jefferson Church, the body of Christ, hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us saying, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Let's pray today together this prayer of illumination. You call us through your word, read and proclaimed, holy God. May our eyes be opened and our hearts willing to follow wherever your spirit leads. Amen. Our scripture this morning is found in Matthew 23, verse 1 through 12. That's our scripture for today. And the other scriptures you'll see, Psalm 107, um, 1 Thessalonians, and Joshua. But on this All Saints Day, year A, I've chosen to speak from Matthew 5, verse 1 through 12. 
Now, this section of Matthew is known as the Beatitudes. It's a type of a inaugural address for Jesus. The Beatitudes in Matthew are statements that tell us about the kingdom of God that is coming and also the kingdom of God that's here on earth. In pronouncing these, Jesus once again turned the kingdom, the norm on its head and reminds us that the kingdom of God is indeed different than we think it is. And these declarations orient life towards the other towards equality, towards discipleship, and towards love. And those of us who follow Jesus, we are to be different. And God clearly lays out our path. Jesus takes us this morning to the yellow brick road and lies, lays out eight steps for us to follow. So, so why, Pastor, are we reading these scriptures on All Saints Day? The nature of the kingdom of heaven it's that it's already and not yet. Anyone know what that means? The kingdom of God is already and it's not yet. Okay. These scriptures, they state the character of God. And they ask, if this is indeed the character of God, should it not always all represent the character of the people of God? That's us. The saints are people who understood this and they lived into this character in a variety of ways. And our saints, the ones that have gone on before us, our aunts, our uncles, our cousins, our, our, our step-parents, they have all taught us what it's like to have God in our midst and to live a life with the Beatitudes as a part of our being. So the Beatitudes that are spoken in our scripture lesson this morning are eight simply stated yet profound guidelines that Jesus revealed to his followers during his sermon on the mount. And Jesus uses the words of the Beatitudes to paint a picture of what the true people of God look like, not physically, but morally and spiritually. And the word Beatitude is defined as a, a state of utmost bliss. The eight Beatitudes we're going to use today, and sometimes there are places you'll read where it's 10 or even 11 Beatitudes. But the ones that we're going to take a quick look at are a roadmap that Jesus gives us to help us find the utmost bliss in this world and the next. So I'm not going to read the scripture because I'm going to read it as we go through this uh, sermon. So those of us who are unfamiliar with the Beatitudes, we may be a little taken aback when we read them and we discover that the secret to happiness is hungering and thirsting and being persecuted for what is right, it's living meekly and mourning and being merciful. That's the secret to happiness. The Beatitudes are difficult for us to understand because they are the antithesis of everything the world that we live in pushes us to believe. In order to be happy, we must be rich. We must own a huge home. We must be physically attractive. We must have an extensive wardrobe, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So like any bad habit, we must break away from this thinking and instead follow the blueprint of the Beatitudes. And if we can do it, we'll have the full blessings of the kingdom of heaven to look forward to. So let's just take a quick look at the meaning of the Beatitudes. The first one is blessed are the poor in spirit. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. Humility is realizing that all of our gifts and our blessings are given to us by God. There's nothing arrogant or self-righteous about someone who's truly humble. And furthermore, when we are humble, we acquire that inner peace that Jesus was talking about. That inner peace that allows us to do the will of God because we can't do it on our own. To be poor in spirit means to be humble before God. Number two, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. We are to mourn not only the violence, the hatred, and the injustices that are present in this world, but we're supposed to mourn the things that we do that are wrong. We're supposed to mourn our sins and the sins of others. Because when we mourn, we open up our heavy hearts to the Lord. And he, in turn, will comfort us. 
Number three, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Well, to be meek means to have a spirit of gentleness and a spirit of self-control. The meek aren't violent. They're not vengeful. They're not willing to exploit others. And then we find number four that says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what is right, and they shall be satisfied. And now Jesus doesn't mean literally going without food or drink. Instead, he's referring to one's passion, one's drive to do what God has called them to do, to follow the path of Jesus. So number five says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. And like the phrase in our Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's those, those who are merciful to others, those who treat others with kindness and forgiveness, then they will be shown mercy. Jesus is the ultimate peacemaker. He has the purest heart. He's merciful. And most importantly, he was persecuted for you and I. We're already on number six. Blessed are the pure in heart. See, they see God. St. Augustine explains, a simple heart is a heart that's pure. And just as the light which surrounds us cannot be seen except through eyes that are clear, so neither is God seen. Unless that through which he sees can be pure. So what it's saying is a pure heart is one that shows acts of love and mercy and beats for righteousness and beats for justice because there's no hatred or jealousy in a pure heart. Number seven, blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called the children of God. We know that God is our source of peace and that God empowers us to be bearers of his peace. And we show ourselves every single day to be children of God when we actively work to reconcile with others, even those that have harmed or hurt us, when we bring together at adversaries, adversaries, and when we work in harmony with one another. For God is not a God of disorder, but he is indeed a God of peace. 1 Corinthians 14.33. Adversaries, I'm sorry. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of what is right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So a prime example of those who are persecuted for the sake of what is right is what we're honoring today. They're called saints and they're called martyrs. And all of us are called to be saints. And like the saints, we suffer for Christ and for others. The kingdom of heaven will be our reward. That's what it's all about. So I just want to remind you this morning that Jesus is the face of the Beatitudes. And the, the whole message of the Beatitudes takes on a whole new level of meaning when we realize that what they really are is a mini biography of the life of Jesus. Because Jesus is the ultimate peacemaker. He has the purest heart. He's merciful. And most importantly, he was persecuted for you and I. That yellow brick road to happiness. It may not be easy to follow, but Jesus gave us a step-by-step -step blueprint, and all we have to do is follow it. Sometime during the week when you have some free time, take a look at the Beatitudes. Amen? Are we ready to have your communion with you? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks this morning to our Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It's right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, the God of Abraham and Sarah, the God of Miriam and Moses, and the God of Joshua and Deborah, 
the God of Ruth and David and the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers and our aunts and our cousins and all of them that have gone on before us. And so with your people here on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to this, your church. You delivered us from slavery and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself, he gave thanks to you and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so when supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this and as often as you do this, as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving. We offer ourselves as a holy sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. And so pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here this morning and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And also this morning, O oh God, renew our commitment with all your saints, especially those whom we name before you, and we name them in our hearts also. We name Ed Noth, we name Leslie Mulligan, and we name Bill Morningstar. And since we are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your sight, O oh God, make us one with Christ, one with one another, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes for his final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, Holy God, now and forevermore. So living God and our guardian who sits on the throne and delivers us into eternal life, we give you thanks this morning for the saints of every tribe, of, of every tongue who now rest in the shelter of your embrace. So we sit aside this quick moment to remember those saints who are dear and precious to us. They have died and they have entered glory during the last 12 months. That's Ed and Leslie and Bill. And almighty God, we bless you for the life and the love of these near saints and we rejoice for them because we know that they have entered the fullness of life in your presence. And this morning, we also remember some other saints those saints that have died and gone on who were our Sunday school teachers, who were our mothers, who were our aunts, who were our neighbors, who were members of this church, who shaped our lives and urged us to the cross. We honor them now as we lift their names in the quietness of our hearts. So saints, we are God's children. What we shall be has not been revealed. 
But we will know that when Christ appears that we shall be like him. For you and I shall see him as he is. So today and every day may we put on Christ and live as saints. The saints who tend the poor, those saints who comfort the mourners and those who learn from the meek and affirm with those who seek righteousness. That we offer mercy alongside of the merciful and that we work for peace with the peacemakers. And we do it all until Christ comes for his final victory as we feast together as the family of God in his heavenly banquet. Amen. Amen. We have a sending song. And after that, we will do our charge and our benediction. Let us do the charge, and when you do, I will be delighted to do the benediction. We do not leave God behind when we leave this sanctuary. God calls to love and to humility, to work and service that have been all to serve. May this call be ever before us, guiding us, inspiring us, and enabling us to be like His body. His hands, His feet, His heart, and now may the grace, hope, peace, and love of God, God our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer, be with us all, 
now and forever. Amen. I just want to call your attention to one or two things before you leave. This flyer in your bulletin, that's next week. That's the scripture that's going to be taught next week. That's the title of what's going on. If you get some time this week, stick it in your Bible and maybe read some of those scriptures. Okay, I did that. And then I want you to um, take a look at the church calendar. Because uh, according to this calendar, we have a blended service on the 12th. And then we don't have one on the 19th. Is that true? Have you seen this? <laughs> yeah, it does not indicate that we have a service on the 19th, which isn't true. We do. Right? You're here. I'm here. Okay. We hope you'll be here. Okay. All right. We will. I'll talk with the secretary and get that corrected for us. Okay. Do you have any questions for me? All right. Be safe. Have a good week. See you next week.